The Rhine Papyrus begins with a long section known as the Recto. That's actually a generic term for any manuscript. There is one side, known as the Recto, and the other side, known as the Verso. The Recto computes the quotients of the form 2 divided by an odd number for the odd numbers from 3 to 101, and so it gives us a very good idea of how the ancient Egyptians performed division. For example, one of the problems is finding 2 divided by 7. Now, 7 doesn't have any aliquot parts worth talking about, but we can at least take half of it, so we might begin by halving, and in fact, Achmos does begin by halving. So 1 half of 7 is 3 and a half. We can find a quarter, that's half of a half, by halving each of the individual parts. So half of 3 is 1 and a half. Then half of a half is a quarter. At this point, Achmos does something rather interesting. He doubles the divisor to get 14, and then doubles it again to get 28, and then he finds that 1 28th of 7 is a quarter. And the thing to notice here is that if we put together the quarter and the 28th, that's 1, a half, and 2 quarters. In other words, 2. And so we find that 2 divided by 7 is a quarter and a 28th. So what did Ahmos do in these last couple of lines? To understand Ahmos' procedure, remember the table represents multiples of 7. So when Ahmos writes 4, 28, what he's really saying is that 4 times 7 is equal to 28. And the next line says that 1 28th times 7 is equal to a quarter. And notice what we've done here. We've actually moved this 28 and the 4 to opposite sides, and so we'll call this step an inversion. So let's find 2 divided by 11, and we'll begin by repeated halving. So 1 gets us 11. Half, well that's 5 and a half. A quarter we can take half of each of these pieces. So half of 5 is 2 and a half, and half of a half is a quarter. For an eighth, we can have each of the pieces again. So half of 2 is 1, half of a half is a quarter, and half of a quarter is an eighth. And at this point, since we're trying to make 2, we might take stock and see what we have so far. And what we need to figure out is what additional pieces we need to make 2. Now one useful feature about repeating halving is that we have a nice visual picture of what each of these represents. So if we start with the eighth, we have one, we have a quarter, which is this much of a block, and an eighth is this much of the block. And since we have the quarter and the eighth, what we need is an eighth and a half. And we can get those through an inversion. So again, starting with our 111, double to 222, and invert, a 22nd is a half. Double again to get us 444. One more time to get 888. Invert, and selecting the pieces we need. And so 2 divided by 11 is an eighth, a 22nd, and an 88th. Now, sometimes Achmos found the quotient by repeated halving, but there's no obvious pattern to how Achmos found 2 divided by n. Most of the time, he took some arbitrary divisor and worked with it. For example, he found 2 divided by 5, and he started by taking 1 third. So if we start with 1 5, to find 1 third easily, it's worth noting that since 5 is 3 plus 2, then 1 third of 5 is a third of 3 and a third of 2. Well, a third of 3 is easy, that's 1, and a third of 2, well, that is the one non unit fraction the ancient Egyptians routinely worked with, that's 2 thirds. So our first line of the table, 1 third is 1 and 2 thirds.
Now, notice that at this point, we have 1 and 2 thirds, and so we need an extra 1 third to make 2, and we can get that through an inversion. So we'll find 3 fives, that's 15, and if we invert it, that's 1 15th, gives us our 1 third, and so we select our pieces, and we find our quotient, a third and a 15th. Now at this point, it's worth raising the following question. Why two-thirds? The one non-unit fraction the Egyptians used routinely was two-thirds, which we've designated as having a three with two lines over it. The hieroglyphic symbol for two-thirds is very suggestive. So remember this symbol, this row, indicates that we have a unit fraction, a reciprocal if you will, and it looks like this is trying to say it's the reciprocal of one and a half. And its use in the 2 over n problems is very suggestive. And it shows up in problems like 2 divided by 9. The one regularity of the divisions performed by Achmos in the recto of the Rhine is that any time he could take 2 thirds and get a whole number, he always did so. So when we divide 2 by 9, we can take 2 thirds, and we can immediately perform an inversion, because that gives us a sixth, and the reciprocal of two-thirds is one and a half. The importance of that is that at this point, what we need to make two is a half, and we can get that by another inversion. First, we'll double our divisor, then invert. Then we'll choose the pieces we need, And that gives us a quotient, 2 divided by 9 is a 6th and an 18th. 